So let's talk about chi-square test now. What is chi-square test and where do we use it? However, first you have to realize that chance plays a critical role in genetic crosses. Why? Because we do not live in perfect world and it's almost impossible to perform perfect experiment. What do I mean by that? Let's consider a simple scenario under which you perform simple monohybrid cross with two homozygous individual. One is homozygous dominant, one is homozygous recessive. So under such scenario, you expect that in F2 generation, the individual phenotypes will fall into three to one ratio. However, in order to obtain this perfect ratio, you will have to count indefinite number of individuals. What I mean, the F2 population would have to have indefinite number of individuals that you count, which is almost impossible. So under normal, not perfect world, you only obtain a certain number of individuals in F2 generation. Even so, the number of individuals is large. It can be 1,000 or 2,000 or 3,000 or 5,000. Uh, the amount uh, mental counted, it is still not indefinite and there is still chance for error. So, under such scenario, what do you have to ask? Uh, firstly, let's, let's consider what you can obtain. So you can obtain ratio instead of 3 to 1, you can have ratio 2.8 to 1, which is pretty close, but sometimes you can get ratio to 2.4 to, to 1 or 2 to 1. Now, question is, was it only chance that produced this difference between observed and expected results, or is there something else? what it might be. Well, certain genes, expression of certain genes might be affected by other genes or environment might play a role. So in order to answer this question, was it a chance that caused this difference or even better ask, what is the probability that the difference between observed and expected results are due to chance? In order to answer this question, you have to perform chi-square test. So to use a chi-square test, first thing you have to do is to determine expected results. You counted your individual phenotypes in uh, your experiments, so you have your observed number, and you calculate from total number of progeny your expected results. Once you have that, you calculate chi-squared number as a sum of all square differences between observed and expected results, and you divide it by expected results. This will yield a number. Let's assume now that our number is 5. It's hypothetical number. Now, once you have this chi-squared number, you determine probability associated with this number. So this is just chi-square number, so you have to determine probability which is associated with it, and we will do it in next slide. Uh, you have to determine it from chi-square distribution table. However, let's assume that the probability associated with this number is high. In that case, you can easily assume that chance alone produces the difference. Why? You remember what we ask. We ask what is the probability that chance alone produces the difference between observed and expected values. So basically this hypothesis we call null hypothesis. So when probability is high, we keep this null hypothesis, it is adopted, or is, it tells you that chance alone produces this difference. However, when probability, which was calculated, which is associated with this number, is low, it will tell you that other factor might be involved and you reject null hypothesis. 
So how do we determine the probability associated with the number that we calculated in chi-square test? We have to use this chi-square distribution table. However, before we go to calculation, I want to bring your attention to two important parts of this table. First, let's look at this first column, which reflects degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom reflects ways that expected classes of phenotype can vary. So how do we calculate it? By a very simple formula, n minus 1, where n is number of different expected phenotypes. Let's say you cross tall and short plants, so your number of expected phenotype phenotypes in F2 generation will be 2, so n is 2, so your degree of freedom will be 1. Calculation of degrees of freedom is important because once you will compare your number calculated in chi-square test and compare it to the theoretical numbers in table, you have to compare it only to those numbers which have the same degrees of freedom. Now let's go back. Second thing I would like you to point your uh, I would like to point your attention at is p or probability. It is actually ref outlined in this top row, and it is the probability that we are interested in probability that is associated with our calculated number. So you can see that probability can vary from 0 0.005 up to 0.995. What does it mean? The probability can be 99.5% or 0.5%. Now, important number here is 0 0.05, which is cutoff number. What does it mean? If your calculated number associates with probability equal to 0 0.05 or lower, what does it mean? It means that there is 5% or lower probability that chance alone produce differences between observed and expected results. So it is very low probability that chance is behind the difference. So on saying it different way, there is significant difference between your observed and expected results, so chance could not produce that. So you have to look at some other mechanisms that might have been involved in determining this difference. If, however, your probability associated with your number is higher, so it's 0.1 and higher, so it falls here. It means that there is 10% here or more up to 99.5% probability that chance alone produce the difference between observed and expected. So in this case, you do not reject null hypothesis because it is probable that chance alone produce the difference. Now, how we proceed with our calculated number? Let's look back that we our hypothetical number was 5 and let's assume that we expected two phenotypes, so our n number was 2, so our degrees of freedom will be 1. So you have to compare or look to compare your a calculated number with theoretical number in this table which have the same degree of freedom. So we have to look degree of freedom at the degree of freedom 1. So we have to look in this row and look where our number calculated number falls. Here you have 5.024 which is slightly higher but almost equal to 5 and we have 3.84. What does it mean that our calculated number falls in between of these two theoretical numbers? Numbers. What does it mean that the probability is associated with our calculated number is in between 0 0.05 and 0 0.025? What does it mean that probability, that chance produce difference between your expected and observed is lower than 5% but higher than 
2.5%. This is very low probability. So the outcome, what you have to consider here is that there is significant difference between your observed and uh, expected which could not have been defined by chance so there are you have to look for other mechanisms